This is Donna and we are live at CBA Unite here in Nashville and I am with Julie who's the author of Giving Hope an Address and so she has agreed to um, tell us a little bit about herself, about the book and then answer a few questions. So um, Julie I'll let you open it up and kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay um, my name is Julie Close and I've written a book called Giving Hope an Address and it's basically my tagline it's an old story um, for a new generation because the story of the founding of the Ministry of Teen Challenge is my story and Teen Challenge is a faith-based rehabilitation program that was started in the early 60s um, through the ministry of David Wilkerson who was my uncle and um, my father as well was a co-founder of the ministry and it this year it's 60 years old and my story is basically the founding of this ministry and before I was born I was born in 1973 so it takes place in those pivotal years before um, in the first 10 or 12 years of the ministry and then it ends with some legacy testimonies of um, people throughout the generations who were completely transformed by this ministry. Wow so um, for people who may not know what Team Challenge is like tell, them, tell us a little bit about what Team Challenge is. Okay well Team Challenge don't be fooled by the name. Team Challenge was originally called Team Challenge because my uncle was called to the streets of New York City to um, minister to gangs and then ultimately to minister to teenagers who were fighting drug addiction but as we know drug addiction now is um, across all demographics and socioeconomic and ages and it touches everybody and so now most of the programs today are they are they are called adult and teen challenge but initially because of the word teen um, it's kind of confusing but it, it's because his first burden was to reach youth and, and the teens in New York City um, so what do you want um, readers to get out of the book? Well, you know, my, my subtitle is it's, it, it's um, the Teen Challenge Legacy Story, and I really want them to, to it, you know, I want a lot of people I've come across know of a ministry, the Ministry of Teen Challenge, like, oh, I know it's in my state or wherever that state may be, but they don't know how it was founded. And, you know, it's 60 years, so there's a whole generation that don't know this story, and it's still a relevant story because, um, look, you know, we have the opioid crisis and we have an increase in heroin addiction. And um, I really am telling the story for a new generation. For I have three teenagers, and so it's for their generation. It's for the millennial generation. I want them to know about the hope of Jesus Christ in ministering to people who are fighting not only drug addiction, but all kinds of addiction. Yeah, and, and I do think, um, it, you know, it, today, I can't imagine what it was like back in the 60s, but I mean, it seems like it would be even worse now, it feels like, because the drugs are so much more addictive, I feel like. It is, and because we have opioids, and because we, you know, we have yeah. um, the medical community, and, and, and you know, the, the, everything that, um, and you know, I, even the White House has, you know, declared a public health emergency on, on the opioid crisis, and so, um, yeah, and it's so changed, but the unique thing about my story and, and what I want people to know is Teen Challenge and the faith-based response to addiction has been there from the very beginning, and they're still there. So I just kind of want to put it in people's mindset that don't forget about the faith-based response because sometimes it's behind the shadows, And um, but I want people to know that we're there, we've been there, and we are 1,400 programs in 125 countries worldwide. So, amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> So, what would you say is the legacy of Teen Challenge? You know, the legacy is kind of where I ended my book. The, I have seven testimonies, and the legacy are those that have walked out of the doors of Teen Challenge and are living lives free of addiction. Um, they are living lives where they are now ministering at different Teen Challenges. They are stay-at-home moms who are ministering to their children. Um, you know, giving hope, and I, I want people to take away from this book that, um, if you, you know, as a follower of Christ, hope is at any address that God has called you to. And um, I want just people to be encouraged that we are supposed to, as followers of Christ, we are supposed to bring hope to the address where, you know, where we are called, whether that's in the workforce or in ministry or as parents um, or even at school and wherever we are. And so I want people to take away this, that this legacy is a faith legacy, but we are all called to a faith legacy. Wow. So um, that reminds me, I was going to ask, like, so giving hope an address, how did that come about? It sounds like you were kind of sharing it there. Yeah. Well, 
actually my father really it, he came up with a title and he kind of put this little bug in, in, in me to, to write this story and he had this um, title it was two brothers who gave hope an address and so we shortened it a bit because I really wanted to I wanted to definitely talk about these two brothers um, and my father and my uncle are pivotal in this book they're the main characters in the book but I really wanted to and my book ha highlights um, the first building um, on the cover is it's 416 Clinton Avenue in Brooklyn New York and it was the first very first address of Teen Challenge and so I so it kind of all comes together to, to share that the hope was at this first address but now the address is all over the world yeah yeah oh, literally all literally, over the world yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I always like to end an interview um, with a um, a fun question, but you know what? Okay, I just thought of another one real quick I want to ask. So um, for people out there who either are struggling um, with an addiction or know somebody is, like, um, what would you recommend to them? Like, how would they um, get help? Well, uh, of course, there's all, you know, I think the first thing people usually do is they think of the secular um, response to addiction. But, you know, churches now um, are good. There's Celebrate Recovery, which is a well-known program through churches. Um, but also look for Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge is in so many states in the country. Um, look for that um, because we are residential. Most programs are residential, but there's all different. Teen Challenges are independent, so they run their programs based on their community and the needs of their community. So um, I think, you know, there's all kinds of um, Teen Challenges that can, whatever your needs are. Um, and and um, so you, Sorry, you, it, your question yeah. was. <laughs> well, and I was thinking, could they Google it? Like, because oh, yeah. I'm wondering how they would find one like close to where they are. Oh yeah, well, yeah. go there's two there's a National Teen Challenge site, and so they can go to oh, that. Okay. Um, and so Google that, and there's a whole then it'll t it'll you know it's basically they'll tell you you give your state, and they'll they'll show what's in your what's in your area. Yeah. And you were mentioning that they do more than just drug addiction now. Yeah, they deal with you know um, sexual addiction. They deal all kinds of um, oh, of course alcohol and any kind of life controlling problem that they and it's because Teen Challenge ministers to the spiritual problem of addiction first yeah. and the one thing that is unique about Teen Challenge is they don't um, they don't believe that Teen Challenge is, is a disease it is a cu it's curable it's not a lifetime um, thing a problem that you are it's it's you know you are cured because of the saving power of Jesus Christ and I've seen it and um, and this book is a testimony to that yeah and you include testimonies in it where people have been successful. Yes, and, yeah. yes, yeah. yep, through the ages, and I do a couple of, you know, 80, from the 80s, and there's seven of them, and, and a recent one, and they're powerful, they're really powerful stories, and, and uh, addiction, we know, it, it touches everybody, and so I wanted to kind of give um, a little testament to the fact that um, it does touch everybody, but of course, God can change anybody. Okay, so now my um, fun question. Okay. Um, what would people be surprised to know about you? I love politics. I'm addicted to politics. I'm, <laughs> I'm usually on my, on my phone at the end of the day looking what's the latest news because now that I'm writing this book and it's, it's a Christian book and it's not political, um, <laughs> I'm still following politics. So they probably would be, be um, surprised to know that. But, and, I, and I love to debate. So. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think we would have been surprised to know about that, huh? <laughs> Oh, we have some people on with us, Kelly, Kay, and Trish. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm thinking they would be surprised to know you like politics, too. <laughs> I don't look political, but yeah. You don't. You seem very nice. <laughs> That's not what we automatically think of. I'm a nice political person. So. <laughs> well, and we need some of those yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, we do. Amen. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. We're actually, this is our last one for the day, so you can join us tomorrow morning, and we will be starting at... 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So we still have seven more authors to go, guys. This has been just an amazing experience. So we'll see you later.